message was revealing itself in this realization and it it feels so profound in that the, what comes to me is curiosity and permission to be curious and I I find that in our culture we associate that with children a child like in order to be curious and not know the answer it must be a child and um, I was curious if you would share with us a little bit about the unknown and the, the embracing the unknown and remaining curious and allowing that curiosity to seed life experience. <laughs> First of all, I am notoriously emotionally a child, so <laughs> to me, that part doesn't make it, it makes total sense. So, well, we mm. I think we have learned so much. From how, from how much we've suffered from knowing. So there's yeah. something about giving ourselves the permission not to know that is so essential for where we are today in the world and also on, on a spiritual path. Like the knowing is what has created religion, what has created dogma, what has created deep separation. So not knowing and permission not to know and to be with each other not knowing, it's, um, it's freedom. And yeah. it's really where, um, and allowing moment to moment what's true to arises, yeah. it can arise only from that place of not knowing. It, it could be a sort of a springboard to a, the relative truth that is valid in that precise moment. The absolute truth is another word that is, uh, you know, that to us doesn't make much sense. Mm -hmm. But the relative truth to the moment and to this specific organism in this specific environment in this specific set of circumstances that makes way more sense. So in the moment you are able to to accept the um, this feeling of not knowing and you can settle in it from there the relative truth that is appropriate for a moment and there, and therefore it, the appropriate action can arise in the moment. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we were discussing today we're talking that people can say, oh if you stay in the unknown, then you, you do nothing you say it's not true because at the end of the day if somebody gives you brings you to an ice cream shop, you still choose chocolate or vanilla. Even in the unknown. It's just that you don't walk all the way to the ice cream stop and say, I want a chocolate cone, I do want a chocolate cone because blah, blah, blah. No, you just walk, you go there, you break it and say, I want chocolate, most like me. <laughs> and we, uh, we do events with many spiritual teachers and one of the most profound moments is when a spiritual teacher says, I don't know. Yeah. I swear I am. And Isn't that powerful? <laughs> giving a permission to relax that grasping we have, even projecting that someone outside yeah. has the answer for us. And it's powerful to see what happens in the group, in the collective. When what do you witness? What happens when you, when a speaker, you know, we have that term stage on stage. So mm -hmm. you throw these incredible events where you're bringing these brilliant minds and mystic teachers and guides from all over the world. You know, they get on stage and they don't have the answer. And they say, I... I actually, I don't, I don't have the answer. Kind of a Krishnamurti, like, yeah. I don't know. I really am not the one to tell you God is within you. Like, the answer is within yeah. you. When you witness that, what is the transformation you feel in that community and that audience when that moment happens? That permission. It's very rare, unfortunately. Is that right? It's oh, very wow. rare. Interesting. Um, mm. Recently, I, we had the experience... No, we're not going to name, yeah. but yes. it happened, sure. and I could feel like there was a silence in the room and like a deep exhale, like a deep relaxation. Mm -hmm. um, Which doesn't last for, for a long time, because immediately, because uh, the let's habit say, is a, so a high percentage of the room 
immediately goes, whoa, 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 what do you mean you don't know? I, 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 you should know. And, and you go in a panic, you know, daddy abandons me. You know, that, that's the, that, that could be the feeling, daddy abandons me, but we, the grown-up doesn't know what's going on. So it depends how, you know, there is a, you, you hit your walls. It's a way to, to when, when you ask people to stay in the unknown, the, the essence and the beauty is that you help people to hit a different space that is not necessary, easy. Familiar. It's not familiar. It's vulnerable. Yeah, because you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what you're going to get. And so in, in our culture, so much of how our society is based on, is on knowing. Right. And, and strength and having the answer. You go to school, so you have all of the answers. Yep. You color within the lines. This is how, what you're supposed to do. You're told what you're supposed to do. And yeah. to be led into the unknown, yeah. mm -hmm. it's vast and it's vulnerable. Yeah. And it's scary. It's and scary. It's scary. It's scary. So we've taken the external knowledge as a way to feel safe because we've lost the safety here. So that's what's underneath of that kind of addiction to knowing. Wow. Is an, addiction. an addiction to knowing? Yeah. yeah. Because we, we're trying to find safety. Yeah. We're trying to find permission and okay. safety because we're just floating in space and how long, when are we going to die and how long does this last and who's... Where am I from and why am I here? And all these questions, the big questions, leave us feeling in the presence of the unknown. And, there, and we feel vulnerable. And we feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. Unless, as you said, we can look within and find that within. What, what have you found to, find, to confront that? Because a lot of people are on a path seeking, how do I find that sense of safety? I'm finding it through a teacher or through this practice. From, from your personal perspective, where does that reminder that it is within you? Uh, the question I would switch it a little bit more. Yeah. Stop looking for safety. Mm. Or I was going to say, I don't find it, it finds me. Mm. When there is availability. There's the experience. It's, it's like I can't search for safety. Right. Because it's already here. So the search, when it relaxes, it's here. Safety. And safety would be a feeling, an emotional feeling, a response. Safety. If you look for safety, you look for something else than what you have. Again, if you if you look for yeah. something, you go back into the into the cycle of chasing the carrot. Yeah. For me, safety is like a deep, warm feeling in my belly. My breath becomes more relaxed. relaxed. Um, there is a deeper relaxation of all the habitual ways of being that keep me so-called safe, safe, they fall apart because there is no need anymore for that kind of learned safety. And, and like you said, you're, you know, we, we've been told these stories, we've been ingrained in these ways with the knowing, the burden of the knowing and all of the, the pain that the knowing has caused. Like that's so profound. What that brings to me is safety is reminiscent of the union, of the oneness, mm -hmm. of the connection. When the child is brought into the mother, there is that connection and that safety, that oneness. Now, if we're thinking of ourselves being brought into that frequency of the divine or that oneness of the mother, whatever it is, to, to be connected again with that oneness of, that creates that sensation of safety. You know, where... It kind of brings us into the topic of division. Yeah. Right. And how are we, you know, what is safety? It's feeling that warmth of feeling like, oh, the connection. I feel connected mm -hmm. and I feel brought together again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And that goes to the essence of the old spiritual teaching, if you wish, right? Is, is this desire to, to feel again one. But, but then we, we have been created historically this uh, religion that separate us from the God and that bring us to a state of constant separation mediated by a priest uh, that for a little a bit of offering you can take care of you out of the God the world and take care of it. And so you create all this uh, when, you, when in reality the essence of spirituality is deep inside you you have this because you've never been disconnected and you're never being connected either at the same time. You know, it's always this it's always this balance between the transcendent and the embodied. 
you are connected. You are God. You are part. You are the universe. You are everything. And at the same time, you are also a separate entity. So once you can drive that fine line, you can dip left and right or up and down in, in both in both and find your your way in being able to manage your, your safety. Mm. Well, we, I, the loss of safety is the disconnect with the self. Yeah. So something happens early on in life usually that creates the the feeling of disconnect. The trauma. The trauma. The trauma. The trauma. Yeah, let's trauma. say it. I trauma. use the word trauma. trauma. Yeah. The trauma. Yeah. It's trauma, which means disconnect from the self. And that has a ripple effect, disconnect from others, from the world, from nature. So and um, so that's why we are not safe, because we lost the connection. Right. We've we lost the connection. We're longing to return to that oneness. You know, trauma, so much trauma happens without us even realizing that it's trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's psychic trauma. It's emotional. It's mental. You know, it, it could be something that, the way that our culture recognizes and defines trauma, they say, well, did you get in a car accident? You know, was yeah. it physical abuse? Like, what trauma did you deal with? But we're constantly dealing with this trauma. And then the division is even more traumatic because our culture is con we're constantly being divided. And so we're, you know, in these unfolding, you know, layers of disconnect. That's right. So to bring I, ourselves back to a safe space. That's right. I love... Um, Dr. Gabor Mate's definition of trauma is trauma is not um, what happens to us, but what we make out of what happens. So, um, two event, the same event can happen to two people, and the trauma will be very different. And it depends, often it depends uh, how it impacts us trauma, whether we had um, a support someone a loving support to bring you in closer to bring you, you to make feel again safe. Yeah. to feel safe to feel safe so if you feel safe the impact of trauma is not as deep as if you were alone yeah supported. absolutely yeah. yeah you are a couple you're lovers yeah you're intimately interwoven and we think about why we would struggle in relationship oftentimes it leads back to trauma it leads back to this you know, the ego and the separation and the story of the you and the story of the me. Oh, yeah. Yet intimacy is building trust mm -hmm. and allowing each other to feel safe. Mm -hmm. So how many of us on the planet, you know, how many people are, are not able to find relationship because they're not able to get to that place of even realizing what the trauma was? They created so much division. Yeah. And then when they find a relationship... They feel so divided and they're trying to figure out how to connect with themselves and their partner and build trust, but it's there's so many layers. I think an, an incredible offering that you two share is this, this reflection of intimacy and connection. And you as two separate beings and bodies, to be doing this work simultaneously on yourselves and then this <laughs> the bigger one working the world. You don't want to know the truth. I'm <laughs> yeah. uh, just kidding. Yeah. I mean, the beauty, the, well, something that is amazing as, you know, lately it's become so apparent. It seems that we are able always to find a relationship with that exact person that has absolutely all the tools that fit exactly every bottom you can push for you. I mean, every bottom. Every bottom. Right. She's the absolutely bottom. the most incredible, powerful reminder of my early childhood trauma. I've been creating and recreating and vice versa. I'm recreating my my familiar situation in which I grew up in the early days through her with all the the thing that made me completely <gasps> in terror. And to be able to deal with this terror, pu this pure terror with this human being and be able to to recognize that I'm no longer that seven years old boy that I can now now I have the freedom to respond in a different way to the same uh, sensation it's a gift that oh my god and yet 
It's a curse, but oh my God, at the same time, I want to run away. I want to get why. And yes, please, thank you, give it to me more. Because that's the only way to grow for me at this point in time. And, and yeah, to me, it's the most in, incredible blessing. Blessing, and then why I understand why people don't stay in relationship for so long. Are you kidding me? It's hard work. And for us, I would say our spiritual work really deepen when we hit our deepest uh, yeah. trauma, which is let's say year five in our relationship. It's like oh, the dark night of the soul, and that's where we really face truly. And you know, it was so easy through all it the agreements easy. and what we've inherited and what we agreed to be for each other. All that fell apart, and being with that is pure terror. That's true. Pure terror. And, mm -hmm. and it's like a building a muscle now, I see. Mm -hmm. we, the terror comes, but we know that it's like another wave. It comes and goes. Because we've tasted the safety that is already here. I, he's not going to make me feel safe, ever. Mm -hmm. I've, I've learned that. Right. It took me the long oh, ride. Right. It took a while. Yeah. I am not going to. My arms are so I'm strong. I can make you feel yeah. safe. Yeah. Like, no, safety's within me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I can say, you know, I am in terror. I am in fear. Hold me. That's all I can say. And that has nothing to do with you, my terror. Yeah. Uh, and in that, actually, there is a deeper intimacy that is. And it's the so, most difficult thing in the world. To be in that space of vulnerability. Yeah. Because if you're triggered, if the trauma is triggered and you're feeling unsafe and your buttons are pushed yeah. and you're getting that fight or flight, yeah. and that happens, to then respond with vulnerability and say, I'm actually really... Yeah, yeah, no, and sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. That's, sometimes yeah. we just have we to just, flee. Yeah. Flee or reaction, fight, fight or flight. I mean, yeah, yeah. We, we are not all Everything. roses. We are not yeah, saying yeah. it's roses at all. Yeah. I mean, we are saying it's a process. It's a hard process. But, but our strength is the recovery. We have a very fast yeah. recovery time. It's getting faster and faster. Yeah. That's so big. it's not the fighter are, are, are memorable. And it's no longer even fight. There, because there fight. is no story to hold on right. to. It's almost like an, an old emotion and an old energy that just needs to be released. And that's nothing it to do even less with and less the, personal. With, yeah. It's like less and less personal. personal. But the recovery is, and then there is the separation. And then the recovery can happen an hour, two hours, next morning, 24 hours. Then the recovery is like, I'm sorry, when you said that, you trigger. When you said that, that line, my little child felt completely in terror that it was not loved. And, and I, I wanted to scream. And then a little girl would say, oh, I'm sorry. And when you responded like that, my little girl felt, and, and, there, and there is the process gets, so basically the grown-up gets in the house, and they say, you know, the little, this is the little child, like, you know what it is. And the grown-up get back, but the grown-up are not always in charge. Actually, often they're not in charge. But at least now we start to realize that there is a grown-up that sometimes can come on board. Yeah. You know? I, I remember reading an, um, an interview, an article, and it was an interview with couples that had stayed together for, you know, 50 years. Like these, it, and it was just random couples. They wanted to interview what was their secret. You know, what holds that love together? What creates that sustained love, that, that family that is so devoted that we, we, we're through that we stick with this. Our spirits have signed up to, to do this schooling together. And we're, we're accomplishing so much, so let's stick with this. Um, and I remember one of the responses saying, "It's you will always have disagreements. It's just how quickly you get through them and forgive and move forward. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you're saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, you cannot pretend not to have disagreement. There will be yeah. most likely one of the two of you is giving up his or her power 100%, or at least at a high mm -hmm. percentage. I could agree all the time. I did it for the longest time. That's what I think. I agreed all the time. But why? What, I, what, what the price to pay is my authenticity. And aliveness. And my aliveness. Because it beca becomes 
or passive aggressive resentment. Yes, we can stay together because it's good to be together. Actually, it's not even that bad. Really, it is good to be together even in that state because, I mean, 90% we are perfectly matched, the two of us. And we often, as couples, and that's again going back to safety, yeah. we would choose attachment versus authenticity. And yeah. that's where we lose, actually, uh, ourselves, our aliveness. So then attachment, you said there are times where you choose Attachment over authenticity. Yes. We often do that. We often. It's the easy way. It's well, the way. way. So would you say that that, that pull toward is driven by fear? The yeah. attachment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that the authenticity is driven by yeah. this trust and this love and this confidence of just yeah. security. I mean, uh, why you will not be authentic? The reason why you're not be authentic is that if I'm authentic... I will not be loved. I will not be loved. As I am. She will leave. Yeah. yeah. Or right. she will scream at me if I'm not authentic. It, no, sorry, if I am authentic, yeah. if I am authentic, if I express my need, desire, want, she will not love me. She cannot love me. Right. And, and in the moment, and, and so is a dance of being able to express your authenticity and, and accept. Yeah. When you say authenticity, mm -hmm. the authenticity, the truth, the reality of what's coming up for you, they, you know, you speak often of... of it's not all roses and hearts. No. The authenticity of, I actually have a problem with that. Or right. you're speaking your truth. Right, oh, absolutely. And that's your authenticity. When the reality is that authenticity is strengthening the core because she's actually building trust because she trusts that you are authentic. Absolutely. So it's this fascinating absolutely. way that relationships work. And when that attachment is, is caused by fear and then to be there's authentic. No yeah. yeah, because there's no trust. Yet when you're authentic... You're actually encouraging and giving permission to really trust because you are, you know, there's nothing hidden. She's, you're not going to, you know, creep up in three days with passive aggression, you know, but you're just going to be your honest self. Yeah. It takes a while to learn that. That's a third. I mean, I don't think you ever stop learning. It's yeah. not the... Uh... Yep. <laughs> My teacher here. Yeah. I will we to the teacher. Yeah. And you also, you have a child. This is your, you have yeah. a child, and you... It's my stepson, which I adore more. Yeah. We've more raised more. him together. No. Oh. I met him when he was six, and now he's 17. Oh, wow. Big boy, and he's adorable, because now we can talk about things that is like, what? <laughs> it's so beautiful. Wow. And, I, and, and now I, I never have children, but to me it's like, I wish I had children. Yeah. As an afterthought. And I never thought it was possible with the little monster. Yeah. I wanted to speak to that. Um, you know, we were talking about essentially having a conscious relationship. It's not that there could be conscious, like, oh, finally, we have a conscious relationship. It's just imbuing it with your intention of, you know, reaching higher levels of authenticity and trust and building. And yet, we have this juxtaposition of the day-to-day -day life of paying the bills and doing taxes, running a business together, putting on events together, raising a child. I think a lot of people can relate to your desire to have, to work through all of that, everything that could slow down your love from being the best that it could possibly be. And, and having a healthy relationship and yet, how do we do the day-to-day -day life and then excel in these higher levels of spirituality mm -hmm. and growth together and we always we often say we have a we we're in a privileged position. Like we can allow ourselves on Monday afternoon to break down and you know, to go and, <laughs> to feel the pain and to go through the process. That's a privilege. So many couples cannot do that and they cannot afford to even feel the pain that is there. Yeah. Why why can they not afford? Because if you're a mom of four, oh. you, there's no space or time to, feel vulnerable, for that, to, to be let the guard down. About to let the guard down, oh. to choose authenticity over attachment. Mm. That's it, this a luxury. It's a luxury, it's luxury. This, this path. It's a total luxury. It's a blessing that, it, that we have to recognize how privileged we are. That because, I mean, I don't say probably something very stupid, but I'm used to it. People with real trauma they don't even get a chance to look at it, mm. in a way. When you know, there are situations, I mean, because the real trauma is so destructive and disturbing to you, 
to, to your organ is that you probably, you know, have other issues, physical issues, because you be illness mm -hmm. or need of extra work or, or abusive relationship or addiction or something. We are in a luxury situation because our trauma, as strong as it is, has somehow allowed us to peel it slowly, 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 slowly in those, in those years. And the luxury of having a person on the other side who can be a mirror in a way that we have been able to handle it. Because most likely we could have run away. And the beauty is that in every moment, in every situation, life is a mirror. So even in the midst of, of all, of being a parent, of working, of taking care of a family, there is this. You know, there is the possibility to, to, to feel and drop, and, and that's what's true here. Yeah. So yes, we're privileged that we can go through the process, but then there is no limit. Like you can do, you know, go in, in any given moment, yeah. in any given situation. I know that as a mother, when my son was younger, it, we are so wired that my nervous system, everything was wired for the safety of my child. So I have chosen many times attachment over yeah. authenticity, and many times consciously for right. And that's okay too. That's okay too, because yeah. then it's, it's the mother bear needs to do something to protect the exactly. cubs. Right. Like exactly. Like she actually needs to stop them from falling. Exactly. She needs yeah. to actually you know, consciously be these different characters so that she can protect the cubs. Like, and that's a powerful force, the mother and the child. That's the biggest force. <laughs> they say that what is the biggest threat in the wild? There's a grizzly bear. Yeah, he's huge. He's a massive grizzly bear. But a mama grizzly bear protecting her young? Forget about it. Yeah. You know, so yeah. there, that's the innate protective natures within us to serve as well, so ha holding space for that, for women too. Um, I, one, uh, we have a little bit more time, uh, just a little bit, and I wanted to, to, and it could be different, you might each have a, a response to this, but in your relationship, what would you say has been your mantra to, to return back to that place of forgiveness and to, to, um, you know, minimize the amount of time spent in the pain and to come back to love and forgiveness. What, what is something that you can lean upon, whether it's a mantra or a thought or a, a realization that you feel can return you back to that place of intimacy, trust, and feeling safe? It's a very internal, yeah, 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 yeah. you know what I mean? For me, it has been, I've got you. Like when I can be with myself and connect to that sense of safety. I've got you. And the other one is, he will not. <laughs> he, will, he won't. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it just stops so much bullshit. <laughs> he would not change. He would not do what I want. <laughs> he would not make me feel safe. It's like immediately it all comes here. Mm. I'm blank. I don't know. The only thing I know that I can be wanted to killer is a big word, but I'm saying really, you know, she, she can irritate me so much that there's nothing in it. And I like, ah, ah. it's like, a, and then I go apart. There is a moment in, in inevitably, all the time has been happening. I come back in the room or I'm in the other room. I think about her. I walk, my body starts moving towards her. I look at her and my body totally drops and I can always say I'm sorry do you think that that has anything to do with feeling going back into your heart and just feeling her yeah because if you're in contact yeah, 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 yeah. in your head you're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. repeating these stories it's, it's, and it's the, just like the, the essence of it the essence of it is this <laughs> I mean she did that you did it's unfair because this and that I can't imagine that I'll be continue doing that until at one point <sighs> But the story and, uh, usually ceases, right? It ceases. It's the story dissolves. Dissolves. And, and it, like, dissolves by itself. I cannot try to dissolve the story with stories. 
Because that's another attempt is always, like I say, no, but she didn't do really that. She really doesn't mean that. She's again, no, she would never do that. She really, maybe she meant to do that. So I try to figure out it's not. It's like trying to stop the storm in the middle of the storm. Yeah. The storm has to, has pass. to pass. Has pass. And then the sun comes. And then love is there. It's always been there. And the beauty that sometimes in the, in the storm, you come in the room and, and you busy, <laughs> you come all the... And you're busy, you're coming to umbrellas and it's just the rain is there. Yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes back or come back after a few hours, she goes and walk the dog or, yeah. or some or go to have a ride or to the shore, yeah. whatever it yeah. takes. And then yeah. she comes back and goes, honey, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> we feel like getting back to the house. Hmm. Because we recycle and cycle and all yeah. of these stories, a lot of... What I hear you saying is that it's the story. It's a story that and makes the language. Illusion. We go back to that place where we originally started, back to the unknown, mm-hmm. to find that safety without the stories. Because the story, it's easily that the story is connected to the other. It's you. The people about the pointing, pointing, pointing is you. With the story, you cannot take responsibility. With the feeling, you take responsibility of your feeling. Wow. Yeah. So if you stay, I'm sad. Because still, the fact that she said, quote unquote, something that I'm feeling sad, I feel hurt still. Yeah. And the fact that I feel hurt, though, doesn't mean that you wanted to hurt me. I feel hurt. And that feel hurt, it's, it's a powerful sensation. And if I can nurture it mm-hmm. and feel it fully, fully then, then this then can go by me. It was Charles was saying something. No, Zendal. He was saying something. And our company said, there is no problem with emotion. The problem is when we hold on the emotion. When you get stuck. When, when you get stuck with that emotion. We don't let the emotion go through. Mm-hmm. If you let the emotion go through, it's a, it's a storm passing by. Yeah. It can be furious, can be scary, yeah. can be hurtful and create a lot of damage. Yeah. But this too will pass. This too will pass. It is such an honor. I really just, I so appreciate the authenticity of what you brought. You know, we have the attachment of the authenticity and you brought so much authenticity you know, to, we give permission by saying, relationships are not all roses. We struggle. We, let's be honest here. How are we going to grow and advance if we're not honest? So I just really appreciate the honesty that you brought and the permission that allows others to acknowledge in themselves and, the, and I think to really get to that place we strive to get to where we have to look at what's not working, what is working, and if we pretend like it's all perfect, we're not really going to get to the point of what needs to get changed. So it's such an honor. Thank you. Thank you for your authenticity. You. Oh yeah, allowing this conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's an honor to have you here, and um, and to be continued. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Happiness. <laughs> Happiness.